Freedom Files. Freedom Files. Weekday. Freedom Files. Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central. On American Freedom Radio. We also are honored to be uh, welcoming back to the show. He took last week off, but he is back with us today. Bob Chapman from the internationalforecaster.com. Hi, Bob. How's it going? Everything is going fine, and I'm glad to be back. We're glad to have you back. I mean, we, a lot happened since we last spoke two weeks ago. The earthquake and tsunami in uh, Japan, and now uh, the U.N. with the uh, resolution 1973, this uh, illegal attack on Libya by the coalition. I mean, I mean, where do we begin, Bob? <laughs> well, um, you name it, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I guess the first thing I'd, I'd like to go over with you is your thoughts about what's happening in Japan. It just seems like that the Japanese people really can't catch a break here. No, they can't. And um, I think that uh, in all probability, uh, the clouds of uh, noxious gas, which we'll call it, um, I think they're a little bit more f- further afield than what the Japanese and the U.S. government is telling us about. I think that's possible. I also question as to why the remainder of the world didn't move in with equipment to help these people. Uh, I thought that was extremely strange. And um, But I do believe it was a natural disaster, and um, one which allowed the people who were behind the scenes making decisions in different countries who cooperate with one another. It allowed them a distraction from other more important things, such as the uh, the debt of the U.S. government and it being funded by the Federal Reserve and the municipal problems in America. Uh, also, the inflation that is being and will continue to be caused on in, in an increasing basis in uh, the economy through inflation, which is being caused by quantitative easing and stimulus. And, um, and then you get a whole set of other circumstances in the Middle East, uh, which are very detrimental uh, to things in general. Uh, big changes being made and maybe another war. And so there's, there's lots of things to examine. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is March 24th, 2011, and we are joined once again by Bob Chabin. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, we were going into, before the break, we were talking about everything else going on in the Middle East and the possibility of a war, I would say a big war uh, brewing. And how possible is it that uh, this Operation Odyssey Dawn um, is could very well be that spark. Well, I think that the two major intentions of what has happened in the Middle East, uh, the reasons to be, were, number one, as a cover to the financial problems uh, in the United States, uh, uh, England, and in Europe. Uh, they wanted a distraction, and they got it. Uh, they wanted to replace Mubarak, which they did. He didn't want to go to war against Iran, and they uh, wanted to get rid of, uh, as it appears now, uh, Mr. Gaddafi, and of course, uh, in Gaddafi's case, they want to control his oil, uh, or the oil of Libya, I should say, and uh, they want to get a hold of the 143.8 tons of gold that he's got there, and... um, one of the interesting things here is that he didn't keep the gold outside the country. Had he, it probably would have been frozen. And so if you back into that, you find that by taking delivery, uh, he's in control of his own destiny to a great extent because he can use that gold to pay for what he needs. And I'm sure that there are armed salesmen uh, from Russia and China uh, they're selling him arms as he needs them and getting paid in gold. And so uh, I think they're after those two items. 
how long will that last? Long, well, uh, that that. Well, I guess you'd call it a revolutionary war. Last, I don't know. Um, a couple of months, maybe longer. Um, the idea, and the second most important thing of the disruption in the Middle East is creating chaos in all the countries, making changes, making sure they control the people who are taking over in these changes, and uh, and just keeping the pot boiling, so to speak, because they don't want anybody siding with Iran because eventually the United States and Israel want to go after Iran. And so in doing so, uh, they don't want anybody helping them. And so that was another reason for doing what they did. Um, I think it's also an excuse for naval and military uh, power to remain in that sector of the world um, under British and American and French control behind the scenes. America's always up front, uh, but the, the others are there with them. And... As far as Japan's con- concerned, unfortunate incident. Uh, they've been in a depression for almost 20 years. They've never come out. And the only reason that they didn't go totally under is that they were able to borrow money from Japanese savers in the postal savings system, which meant they didn't have to go outside the country and borrow money like the U.S. did. And so um, I think it's going to cost a lot of money to make things right in Japan. Uh, it's going to cost them a lot of exports. A lot of... It's going to cost them their place as an exporter. They're talking about $309 billion to fix the problems. I don't think so. Um, five to $600 billion will be minimum. Could be as much as a trillion. And so uh, they're kind of out of the game right now. Um, but the distraction was there to help those who needed it and wanted a distraction. The, um, the situation overall, economically, worldwide, is not that bad. Uh, by far, those negatively affected uh, have been the United States, England, and Europe. I mean, you can take two companion economies here next to the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Last year, they they grew about 4.5%, no stimulus, no quantitative easing. And they both have about 4.5% real in, uh, in, in, um, inflation rates. And uh, I think... They will probably grow about 4.5% this year each. Canada might even grow a little bit more than that. Uh, It's hard to say. And I think that when you look at those two, you say to yourself, gee, what is the difference? Well, the difference is that the United States has been so poorly run, uh, the, uh, the people in Wall Street and in banking, the people who own the Fed Reserve, the people in the Treasury Department, and transnational and other corporations have simply been looting America. Looting, 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 and they're not stopping. They're going to do it until they can't do it anymore. And yes, you have that in other current countries, but not to the extent today that you have in the United States. So on a scale of 10, 10 being worst, the United States, England, and Europe attends. Maybe Canada and Mexico and Australia. Maybe their fours or fives. That's the way it's going to end up. Everybody's going to suffer. Because things are going to get worse. I saw Gary Schilling's report this morning. And Gary came out and called the top of the uh, real estate market eight months after I did. I was the first one to do so. And so he's been really on, right on. Uh, Facts and figures are excellent. 
is calling for another 20% correction in housing prices plus the 8 and 9% they're down already this year. Now, that is going to be brutal. And that's going to be caused by no improvement in unemployment. In fact, it's going to get worse. Higher inflation. Inflation's going to be 14% at the end of the year, maybe higher. And when QE2 snaps in, inflation-wise, next year, it'll probably jump to 25 or 30%. And if they have QE3, it'll go to 50%. And if they, we have that happen, that's hyperinflation time. And so we're looking at some very difficult times ahead. And the people on Wall Street, they just go on their merry way. In Washington, there is no constitution. They do what they want to do. And as this goes forward, the American and European and British economies deteriorate. And that, that seems to be exactly what's happening. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is internationalforecaster.com. And with the uh, economic situations brewing in the U.S. and the U.K. and the European Union, uh, I've heard a lot about uh, what's happening to Portugal right now. They're starting to have a... They're, they're probably already in the midst of a financial collapse. Their socialist government has basically quit. Uh, you, were, you were talking about this a few months ago on the show, and this is just one more domino in the European Union uh, collapse, I think. Well, it just goes to show you, you can't trust any politicians. Uh, the politicians running that country lied and lied and lied. We don't have a problem. Well, today they have a $100 billion problem. And that's just for openers. Now, what is the top? Maybe three or four hundred billion. Um, are the rest of the European nations going to bail them out? I don't know. They've already said they would commit themselves for a trillion dollars. Uh, with just the six countries alone that have problems, we're looking at three to five trillion is needed. And Brussels, right this day, they're trying to work out a deal where they add another trillion, making it two trillion. But that's not going to solve the problem. And who's going to make the decision in a place like Portugal when they don't have any government? Good question. And I understand so far at the meetings in Brussels, which have been demonstrated against in a big way that there's no conclusion to adding another trillion. And I don't think they're going to get one. The rest of Europe is sick and tired of having countries be failures and then have to pay for it. It's just not fair. It's just not right. And uh, they're balking, particularly Germany. And who can blame them? Because they're, they're you know, the biggest contributor. And so uh, the, the problem of Europe is far, far worse than it's made out to be. We have the euro selling in dollar terms of about 141. And it shouldn't be there. But it is because the dollar right now is weaker. Uh, who's got the biggest problems? Who cares? They're both gigantic, probably the United States. Um, is there going to be some kind of a solution in Europe? No. No, what's going to happen in Europe um, is that one of the countries will default and several will follow. The euro will end. They keep on telling you how complex it is to go back to your own currencies. Well, I got news for you. It's not that complex. And they know exactly how to do it. And the Germans will show them how to do it. Germ Germans never wanted to be in the euro. Never. <laughs> they don't even like being in the European Union. So I think they're not going to come to any cons conclusion there. And they're not going to know what to do. Uh, they went so far as to 
formulate and propose a an addendum to the Lisbon Treaty, treaty which is their new constitution, which is nothing more than an agreement uh, that nobody wanted, except the bureaucrats and the one-worlders. And uh, I don't, I don't know that that's going to happen, nor will it work. See, in Europe, the whole underlying problem is cultural. It's a anthropological problem. You have countries where you have five or six or seven or eight different tribes. Yeah, I'm talking about Europe, not Africa. And all these people are different. How do I know that? I live there and I speak their languages. Now, to agglomerate, amalgamate, join together these dashboard different groups is crazy. It won't work. I mean, back 11 years ago, they told us, well, people are going to move from France and uh, from Paris, and they're going to go over and live in Frankfurt because they got a better job over there. Or they're going to move from Vienna to Denmark, to Copenhagen, and so on and so forth. Never happened. Never happened. There was some movement, but very little. No more movement than there had been in the past. Cultural distortion, I'll call it. And the second most important factor, one, interest rates is, is for all. That's absolute insanity. And look what happened. Ireland, Greece, Portugal, and Spain took the cheap money and went crazy, built everything they could think of, and now they got nobody to buy or be put into those homes or buildings. So it's been a disaster. They're not going to tell you that in the mainline media, but that's exactly what it is. In the United States, you're very well aware of the problems. Tremendous debt in all sectors. We're in an inflationary depression, and it's going to get a lot worse. We've been in it for two years, incidentally, and there's no way out of it other than purging the system. And we'll get to that after a fashion. Will it be QE3? Yes. Yes. Will it be QE 4, 5, 6, 7, 19, 20? I don't know. Maybe. It all depends on how much inflation we get and whether we get hyperinflation. It also depends upon if there's going to be devaluations, revaluations, defaults on a multilateral basis. Is another world reserve currency going to appear? Or will it be the dollar over again after its adjustments? Will it be 25% gold backing in this new currency? Absolutely. They can't make it work without it. And that's why gold, silver, bullion coins and shares are a lock for safety and for making money. Exactly. Um, I mean, it's... I mean, you see everything that's happening, not just here in the United States, but over there in the European Union and also in the United Kingdom. I mean, it's a very bad situation that's going on. And uh, like you were talking about a moment ago with uh, Japan, they were already in the midst of a depression before this earthquake hit. And I, I think we are heading towards uh, the very real possibility that things are going to get so bad financially throughout the world that they're going to be able to force this uh, one world currency on us. Well, they're going to try, and people aren't going to buy it, even if it's backed by gold, but they've got to back it with gold for the chance of it happening. They think another war is going to save them. That's why they're clearing things in the Middle East to get it going. And if they go after Iran, then China and Russia will go after the U.S., and the game for World War Three will be on. And that's very important, and the reason why it is is that they would use that as a cover. And that cover will allow them to say, we never caused those problems financially and economically. It's a result of the war. And they think they can get away with it. And I get news for them, they're not. Yeah, we can only hope so, Bob. I mean, 
I mean, if you see what happened with uh, the resolution 1973, both China and uh, Russia abstained from voting. They, di they didn't vote against it. They didn't veto it, but they, they basically sat on the fence, and now they're both speaking out against this uh, police action or military action or whatever Washington, D.C. wants to call it. Yeah, well, maybe Mr. Illegal Alien will give back his uh, Nobel Prize for peace that he received <laughs> for doing nothing. Uh. <laughs> so now Bob Chavin is calling for Obama to return his Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> well, why not? Yeah. yeah, I agree. He shouldn't have why got not? it in the first place. I mean, place. the whole thing was ludicrous in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, incredible. Yeah, I mean, mostly, I mean, for the to be honest, Bob, we're about to go to break, but the Nobel Peace Prize is one big joke. I mean, they've given it to Obama, Al Gore, uh, Kissinger, and several other clowns. So I don't really uh, hold the uh, Nobel Peace Prize up to very uh, high regard. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. More of him right after this right here on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is March 24th, 2011. James Burns hanging out with Bob Chapman this afternoon. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And before the break, uh, Bob, we were getting into the possibility of a third world war. I mean, it, it seems, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about this for some time now with all these different pressure points that are out the world, like North and South Korea, the situation with uh, Israel and Palestine, Israel, the U.S., and, of course, uh, Iran, and uh, also uh, with China and Russia right there. I mean, th this whole thing that's going on in Libya, Operation Odyssey Dawn, is really starting to show you exactly which pieces are on which side of this uh, uh, chessboard. Well, I think that, um, I don't think they expected uh, the trouble that they've got in Libya. And uh, they're going to try to bring it to an end as quickly as possible. They have their coalition guns uh, of all kinds of weaponry blowing up everything in sight. <laughs> And so I think probably it's only a matter of time, whether it'll be a month or two or three, or um, Mr. Gaddafi can't win. I mean, he's taking on the whole Western world, unfortunately for him. Um, he's certainly not one of my favorites, but uh, what's being done to him is very obvious as to what it is and why it is. And... Um, it's going to come to no good end. The connection between the Middle East and uh, Europe is very strong uh, commercially and especially in the field of uh, petroleum products. And so uh, it's going to have an impact, if not quite an impact, on Europe. Uh, the, the problems in... Yemen and Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, Arabia are not over yet. And um, I, I think they could go on for several months as well. Whether they'll all end up, uh, I can't say. And um, for that matter, I don't think anybody except the in insiders can say. Um, I don't know that they expected the vicious rioting that took place in Bahrain and uh, because of the indiscriminate shooting of Saudi mercenaries. And um, the actions of the king dictator in uh, Yemen was surprising as well. Uh, he had his troops on the tops of buildings with weapons, of course, the public doesn't have any. And uh, they shot people down on the street like it was a turkey shoot. Only it was a human shoot. And uh, those kinds of things never get rectified. I mean, once they happen, there's you know, like no way back, so to speak. And so uh, the problem's going to exist for months, maybe even years. And how long will it take? Or will the U.S. and Israel invade Iran? Remains to be seen. 
I know that they are taking all their dollars and buying gold, and who can blame them? And so it's something you have to watch. Try to analyze as much as you can the situation in Europe and the United States the same way. Um, on the short term, China's a, 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 Japan's a dead duck. As the world economy starts to slow down again, you know, in the United States they're talking 4% GDP growth. I'm talking 2 to 2 and a quarter. We'll see who's right. But all of these events have got to slow things down a bit. There's no recovery. Um, you know, they've spent uh, about $1.8 trillion already. Um, are they going to spend 2.5 like they did last time? Probably. Uh, when will that happen? Probably over the next three months. You know, the remainder, which would be about eight, $800 billion. And it, it, we're going to find out a lot, too, from the things that the Fed did two and a half, three years ago. And when they were asked, who did the money go to? Why? How much? That sort of thing. And um, they didn't want to give that information out. Said it was a state secret, which, of course, it wasn't. And the appellate court told them they have to go do that and give that information out. And... Um, they're in the process of doing that probably next week, maybe maybe even today. I haven't seen anything yet. But we're going to find out that illegally the Federal Reserve funded every financial institution that needed help in Europe and the United States. All illegal. And Ron Paul is going to have a field day with that, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I came across that article a couple of days ago. How like the commercial bankers were, were they went to the Supreme Court telling them, you know, we we don't think that the, the uh, public needs to know about this. We need we think you guys need to uh, to uh, turn this down. And, and basically, for one for one of the few instances of the Supreme Court actually uh, doing right by the people, they said, nope, uh, we're going to um, open the books, and uh, the Federal Reserve is going to have to tell us exactly where they sent that money went and. You know, that, that should have happened on day one, Bob. I mean, first off, my opinion is we should have never have bailed out the banks to begin with. But, I mean, it's just, it's just sad that it's taken this long for us to finally get them backed into a corner where they have no choice but to open the books. Well, people are going to be shocked, even in the investment community. I mean... The whole thing is such a scam. It's so crooked. And they, they, it shows you that they don't care what you think. They do anything they want. Anything they want. They just do it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's pretty obvious that they do that all the time, not only with the banker bailouts. I mean... The majority of the American people were against it. They called Congress. They burned the switchboards, and you know they they passed it anyways. I mean, and the same thing going on here of Operation Odyssey Dawn. The majority of the American people and the people in the United Kingdom they don't want this uh, police action, uh, but the coalition is doing it anyways because you know the UN says, "Hey, we're going to institute a no-fly zone." So we have no further control out of our, over our government. And once the economy t deteriorates to a certain level with its starvation in the United States, that's when you see a uh, revolution. And it's coming. Uh, I don't see how it can be avoided. And the people, if they don't revolt, uh, they have no hope. They're going to become I slaves. I agree, Bob. I mean, that's... I mean, that's the only two directions I think we can go. Either you, uh, finally, the people will get enough of this BS, and we'll, they'll finally decide to rise up and say no more, or they're just going to keep taking it and say, okay, okay, just leave me alone, and I'll do whatever you say. Uh, but things are getting a lot worse. I mean, not only do you have oil and gold and silver prices go up, you also have food prices going 
through the roof. I mean, you have food shortages throughout the world. You have the radiation, which has contaminated the food supply in Japan. Plus, uh, in Texas right now, they're experiencing the worst drought in 44 years, and that's going to affect uh, the wheat and beef supply. So that, that's another issue we have to contend with. And that goes back to what I've been talking about for the last 11 years. Dehydrate to freeze-dried foods, a filter, and a method to defend your family. You people should have had it all in place. Get laid off, at least you can eat. Exactly. So, these people have nothing, no one to blame but themselves. Can they still go get food? Sure they can. you got to be willing to pay for it. In the last year and a half, food prices have gone up more than 50%. That's going to keep right on going. Two reasons. Problems with the weather, number one, earthquakes. And number two, money fleeing to quality. That flight to quality is taking place going to commodities and gold and silver. And commodities include beans and, and grains and hogs and cattle and everything else. And they're going to continue to go up in value because people are buying them because they're real things. And they really don't want the money that they have. So they're getting rid of it. They don't trust the stock market. Any investor that doesn't understand that the markets, all of them, are rigged every day. I mean, we saw it in gold today. They, they, they can't restrain themselves. Every time it tests the, the, the old high of uh, 1444, in marches the government, and they use derivatives, options, futures, and they attack. The government is the enemy in America. The enemy. And incidentally, they're now calling people like me financial terrorists. And uh, they're going to try to shut us all up. And uh, with me, it's going to be interesting because they're going to have to find me. That's right. <laughs> They'll have to find you first. <laughs> but, yeah, it is sad because you had that uh, uh, the Von Natas the other day. He was... He was uh, found guilty of domestic terrorism because of his liberty dollars. And, I mean, the, I mean, and then you see what happened at the White House the other day. You had a whole bunch of people protesting the eighth anniversary of the, uh, the Iraqi war, plus uh, the action going on in Libya. And it shows you exactly what we live in. I mean, I thought this was a, you know, a free constitutional republic, not a police state. I mean, where people get arrested just for uh, exercising their First Amendment rights in front of the White House. But that, that's not the case anymore. And it's going to get worse. It's heartbreaking because, I mean, if, if people don't see it by now, it doesn't matter what side they're on, they're on the left side, the right side, the independent, whatever. If you don't see the fact that, that we live in this police state, I mean, how far in the sand do these people have their heads in? Deeply. Yeah, I mean, I mean, once upon a time, I mean, you used to have a right to protest in front of the White House or any, any public building, anywhere. Now you have to have... Free speech zones or permits just for protests. And you're hauling people away that were uh, coining their own currency, and they were, they were trying to use the Constitution to defend the Federal Reserve. That's an oxymoron right there. The Federal Reserve creates billions of dollars out of thin air every day. And this gentleman created a coin that was worth what... They said it was. Uh, who should be in jail? Bernanke and everybody in the Fed? And the answer is yes. Exactly. And it just shows you exactly where they are. I mean, there's nothing in the Constitution about us having a central bank. The founders fought against the first national bank. Uh, you had Jackson. He fought against the second national bank. The fact of the matter is we shouldn't have a, a central bank. We should have the currency under the control of the U.S. Treasury. That's the way it used to be until 1913. Granted, they made plenty of mistakes, but the people who have been in control since, they've looted the country. Looted it. 
not only have they looted it, they you know they are also probably consist of some of the puppet masters. Mm-hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Russia and China do in the media future here in regard to the Middle East, and particularly Libya in this case. And if along the way over the next year or so the U.S. and their, quote, partners decide to... And we'll be right back, Bob. we got a final segment coming up. My guest is Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. More of him right after this right here on American Freedom Radio. Have Welcome and Murphy. back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is March 24th, 2011. James Burns, along with Bob Chapman, my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And before the break, Bob, you were uh, getting into uh, your thoughts about uh, China and Russia concerning Libya. Well, I think if it lasts long enough, uh, they might get involved. They're certainly involved now with weaponry. Uh, we haven't been told that, but um, that goes without saying. Um, but I think Iran is the key. If they go after Iran, they're, they're going to want a uh, a third world war. And uh, the timing is theirs. They'll do it when they want to do it. They've got the Middle East now set up. And um, that's the path they'll take. And Russia and China will have to get involved. They They, they won't have any choice. What's sad here, Bob, is I, I really think that a lot of people in the world are getting sick and tired of uh, the United States in the West playing world police, just like uh, China and Russia are. And who could blame them? I mean, look, look, we've meddled in so many people's affairs over the past several decades now. Uh, we've made bad situations worse. And it's only a matter of time before you do have countries like China and Russia and others say, you know what, that's it. We're sick and tired of this. Well, you're right. And um, that's why people subscribe to the forecast because they want to hear the other side, the the real truth about what's going on, or at least what we don't know so far. I mean, there's only so much you can know, especially when you're dealing with warfare. But uh, And they count on that, believe me. And uh, this whole thing is going to go forward now. And um, where it'll all lead... Uh, one doesn't know, but it's not going to be nice. And um, preparation is where you should be at right now, mentally as well as physically. And uh, the people who keep their jobs are going to be the lucky ones. Uh, the people who have prepared food and things like that, they're going to be lucky ones. And um, But there'll be enough people who will have nothing that uh, they will demonstrate and then finally uh, revolt and the game will be over. Yeah, it's all coming to a head, Bob. I mean, I've been I've been trying to prepare for this for the past couple of years now as, as best as I can. And uh, hopefully everybody out there that's listening to the show right now is has been doing the same. You know, uh, you know top of the list, of course, is buying you know food, like you were talking about, freeze-dried, uh, food that you can store that'll last a couple of years. Uh, definitely, you want to have a water source. You want to have, you know, a way to defend yourself and your family and friends and loved ones. And uh, any extra money probably would go towards gold and silver. And I would also recommend if if you can get some, I would I would try and get as far away from the cities as possible and get some land out there. Well, that's not easy for people to do. And there's no guarantee that you'll be safer there. And most people can't afford it. And who knows who you're going to get for neighbors? Are they going to agree with you or aren't they? I mean, who knows? Well, that's, that's a very good point. A lot of Robert. ifs. That's why there's a lot of planning that has to go into these sort of things. And it's hard uh, to get people to do that because you don't know when it's going to happen. That's very true. Can you imagine being in the middle of Los Angeles, you know, with millions and millions of people. I mean, it'll be like a 
somebody open the doors of the chicken coop and let them all out at the same time. Yeah. I mean, they go, they go crazy when the Lakers win the, the championship game. Imagine what they're going to do when something really bad happens. That's right. <laughs> well, I went through two riots in, the, in Los Angeles. I lived there for 36 years. So I know its potential. And they've done as much as possible that they can to keep people unarmed. But um, the arming of people happened so long ago, uh, back starting in the early 60s, and weapons that have never been registered have been handed down in families. And so there's, there's millions of weapons in California that government knows nothing about. So it'll, it'll be a hotbed. Yeah, it will be. And, and that's what's so funny about this whole thing. They're, the government's efforts to make things illegal, like back in the 1920s and 30s with alcohol, and now with the drug war and with uh, firearms in cities, it doesn't stop people from getting them. No. No, it doesn't. Uh, hasn't. And uh, there's just simply uh, a lot of weapons that were purchased prior to any kind of Registration of any kind. I mean, I've got plenty of them that have never been registered. There's no way they're going to find out that I have them. Exactly, and you know, even if they made made it illegal, that wouldn't stop the you know the gangs and whatnot from getting guns either. Uh, Bob, in the final minute we have left, uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? Well, it's about business, finance, economic, social, political issues all over the world. Published by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays, about 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy for those who are not on the Internet. Everything that you need to know each week is in that publication. You can get a free copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. The International, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com, or to www.intforecaster.com intforecaster.com or if you have a question we answer everyone or if you'd like to get a free copy or if you'd like to get our, our latest gold and silver recommendations you can email us and that address is bob bob at intforecaster.com bob bob at intforecaster.com or you can call, call toll free 877 877- Four seven nine eight one seven eight. That's eight seven seven four seven nine eight one seven eight. Get free copies there, and if you want to become a subscriber, that's the place to go. They have a free subscription there, and they're offering a deal. The deal is fantastic. Take advantage of it. 